Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 21 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to talk about GUI event handling, including action listeners, key listeners, mouse listeners, window listeners, and I'm going to show you a bunch of shortcut ways to use interfaces, among numerous other different things. If you didn't watch part 20 of this tutorial, definitely watch it, because I'm going to use parts of that tutorial here, and I'm not going to completely explain what they do, because I expect you to have seen it. Now, if you're going to be tracking events inside of your GUI interface, you need this events library inside of Java. So we're going to throw that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create all of our buttons. So there's button one inside of this main Java lesson 20 class. So they'll be accessible by all of the inner classes inside of it. So I'm going to put J text field, text field one, J text area, it's going to be text area one. And then I'm going to put an integer in here that's going to be button clicked. Okay, and then I'm going to go through here and explain some of the things so that you understand what's going on, but I'm not going to get into massive detail, like I said before, because I covered it before. Here I'm making a call to the constructor file that's going to create this whole entire interface for me. And then here is the constructor file itself. Down here I'm setting the size for my frame or my window that's going to appear on the screen. Here I'm creating a tool toolkit object and what this is going to allow me to do is get the width and height of the screen. This dimension is going to allow me to store heights and widths. Here I am figuring out the X position upper left hand corner for my window by taking the dim which is the width of the screen divided by two then taking the width of my actual window or frame and dividing it by two. That's how I'm figuring out the X and Y position. Set location is going to actually define what X and Y position for my frame I'm going to be creating. Set default close operation is going to say that everything should close down whenever they hit the close button or exit button. Set title is going to define the title for my frame. This is going to create a panel that's going to be inside of the frame or window. and It's going to hold all my components and here is where I'm actually creating the button and here's where I'm defining what the button text will be. So I'm sort of caught up there now on exactly what we changed from the last part of the tutorial. Now I need to come in here and actually create an instance that's going to listen for events on my button. So I'm going to call this listen for button. I'm going to go L for button is the name of this listener. And it's just listening for events to occur on my button. That's what it's doing. Just created that guy. And then make sure, of course, you spell everything right. And all the code is underneath this video. And you should definitely look at it because it's heavily commented and it will help you learn this stuff instead of just hearing me talk about it. Then what I need to do is go button one and go add action listener. And then I got to put L for button inside of that guy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and actually create this class called listen for button. So let's scroll way down here where it says implement listeners. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private class. It's going to be called listen for button, like you saw above. See, scroll back up here, line 44. See, listen for button. This is the class object we're going to be creating here. So I got to create the class for it. And then if I want it to act like an action listener or an event listener, or whatever you want to call these things, think of them as anyway, I have to go implements action listener, right like that. Okay, now that I have that action listener set up inside of this guy, since it is an interface, I need to define a method called action performed. And later on, I'm going to show you a shortcut way to be able to pull all these guys into here for free without having to think about what they are, meaning the methods that are needed for the interface. And then what I'm going to do inside of this guy is I'm going to put an if statement. I'm going to say event. That's what E stands for. I'm going to say get source. I'm going to say if it's equal to button one, meaning the button one had an event occur on it. Well, I want to do some things. So I'm going to say button clicked plus plus. It's going to add one to the number of times the button was clicked. And then I'm going to go text area one dot append, which means I'm just going to add to the text area. And I'm going to say button clicked. And I'm going to define how many times the button has been clicked. I'm going to put in times and then I'm going to put in a new line statement and then close that guy off. And just real quick, if you would want to return information in regards to the button itself and all the different events that occurred, you could also put e dot get source like that and then follow that with to string. And that's going to put out all kinds of information. And you can consider that homework if you want. Try typing that in and see exactly the type of information that comes out. But for right now, that's all we need to do to implement this guy. It's going to be able to track how many times the button's been clicked. 
So let's go back up into our code and continue adding to it. So we come down here and you can see right here where it says the panel add. That means I'm going to add this button to the panel that's going to go inside of the frame. And then here I'm also going to create a text field. And this is the text that's going in there by default. I'm actually going to leave this blank because I think it'll work better that way. And then 15 is going to be roughly the size of it. Now I'm going to put a listener inside of this guy. It's going to be called listen for keys. L or keys like that is equal to new listen for keys. And this is going to track keys being clicked on. I'm going to show you for a second here how to run that guy. And then I'm going to go text field one dot add key listener. See before we had add action listener. That's saying, hey, I want you to listen for any actions. This is saying I want you to listen for any key presses. That's all it's doing. And then all I need to do is say L4 keys for this guy that I defined right here for the class that I'm going to create down below. And then I'm going to scroll down here and actually start creating this guy. So right after this, I'm going to go private class listen for keys implement. I'm using an interface here. Key listener. And then here I'm going to show you a shortcut to be able to bring in all of the required methods that are needed for this class since I'm implementing the key listener interface. I'm just going to come over here where this little error mark is. And then this little thing pops up where it says add unimplemented methods. And I'm going to click on that. And it's going to fill in all of the different methods that are required to use this key listener interface right inside of there. That's going to save me a lot of time. And it's going to keep me from having to memorize all this stuff. And this is built into Eclipse, which is free. Then I can come right down here. And here is where you would want to type in any comments that would be specific to the changes you're making. One thing I'm going to do is come in here to where it says key event, change that to E. And basically this method is going to be called anytime a key is clicked on. So what I'm going to tell it to do is I'm going to say I want you to take text area one and I want you to append to it key hit colon plus and then I'm going to call E to get key character. What this is going to output is the character that was clicked on inside of that text field and it's going to put it in my text area. That's all it's going to do. And then this guy would be called if a key was pressed and then released. And then this would be called whenever a key was just simply hit. So I see no reason to implement these, but I do need to define them, even though I'm not going to put any code in there because that's just a role for using this interface. So now I'm going to scroll back up here again. And I'm going to start making some additional changes to this text area that I defined inside of here. And you can see right here, this is where I added the text field to the panel, which we have to do. Here I'm defining my new text area where I'm going to be dumping all kinds of information into it. Here is going to be the default text. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say tracking events. And I'm going to put a new line inside of there. Set line wrap is saying that whenever we get to the end of the text area on the right side, I want it to wrap down to the next line. Set wrap style word is saying that I don't want to split words. This defines a scroll pane if it's needed, which is just little scroll bars. And this is saying as needed, so it's not going to show up unless it's needed. Here we added the scroll bars and here we added the panel itself to our frame. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do some listening events for the window or the frame. For It's kind of funny because Java will refer to frames as frames and sometimes refer to them as windows. Either way, and I'm doing exactly the same thing is equal to new listen for window. It's just the same thing over and over again. Then I'm going to say this add window listener. This being a reference to the frame or the window that's going to be on the screen. And I'm going to say L for window. Now we can come down here and actually create listen for window. Copy that. Let's scroll down here. Come down here. Paste in that. And again, I'm going to go private class listen for window. And this guy is going to implement the window listener. So it's going to track events that occur on our window. And then what are we going to do? We're going to save ourselves time again. We come in here. I'm going to come up here and click on import window listener. And then come over here, click on it again, and say add unimplemented methods. There you go. Now I don't have to type all those out or memorize them. And I'll go through and explain what this means. Window activated means this is called whenever the window is the active window. Window. And I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to put an E inside of here. And I'm going to print out a message based off of the fact that that is active. Again, I'm just going to say append. And I'm going to say window is active. Close that off. And I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use it again. Window closed. This is called whenever the window is closed using the dispose function. And the way that works, show you here real quick. 
if this, which is a reference to the frame or the window itself, dispose is called inside of our Java code, this guy right here will be called. So I see no reason to do anything with that since I'm not gonna be using it. Window closing is called whenever the window is closed from the menu. Window deactivated is called when the window is no longer the active window. That means like if you click on some other window, maybe I'll do something with that, paste inside of there. Window is not active. Window de-iconified. What that means is it's gone from its minimized forms to its normal state. And I could come in here and put something in there for that. Window iconified, that just means that it's been minimized. And I could come in here and do this and put is minimized. And window opened is called whenever the window is first created, like originally created. We can come in here and make some changes to that, created. So those are all the different things you can do inside of here in regards to tracking window events. So let's jump back up into our code and just keep adding stuff to this. Let's say we wanted to track uh, mouse movements inside of our little application we create. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go listen for mouse, define the class that I'm gonna need to create all this stuff inside of here. Listen for mouse is equal to new, listen for mouse. And then I'm gonna go the panel. So this is gonna track all mouse movements on the panel. Add mouse listener, L for mouse. See, same thing over and over and over again. So I just need to define this class. So I'm gonna be doing that down below. And guess what we're gonna do? Private class, just like we did before. Listen for mouse, implements mouse listener. I'm gonna click over here on the left side. I'm gonna click on import mouse listener. Click back over here on the left side and then have it add all my unimplemented methods. There you are. Yeah, I'm gonna scroll up here and I'm gonna grab this little text area thing we created before. Come back down inside of here. This is called whenever the mouse is clicked, obviously. And let's change this to E. And I'm gonna do a little bit more interesting things here. I'm gonna say mouse panel position. This is gonna give me the X, Y position inside of the panel. Get X plus E get Y. I'm gonna go plus and I'm gonna throw a new line in there. Just keep everything consistent. And I'm actually gonna copy this because not only am I gonna get the X and Y position inside of the panel, but I also wanna get the X and Y position on the screen and you can get both. And it's just get X on screen. See, it totally makes sense that it would have that name. And this is the same on screen. Not much difference. Make sure we have a semicolon at the end there. And then we could also do some other things like uh, get the mouse button that was clicked. And how we do that is go E get button like that. Pretty simple that side of there. Throw this down here. Let's say we want the number of clicks, the number of times a person clicked. If you want to track if it was a double click or not, we're just going to go get click count. And for everything else, I'm just going to leave those default just empty. Of course, mouse entered means that the mouse has entered wherever you put your mouse listener, which would be on your panel. Mouse exited means it left that area. Mouse pressed means the mouse button's pressed. And mouse released means, of course, the mouse button's been released. So we added all this crazy stuff to it. Let's execute it and see what happens. There you go. So you can see here, if you can't see this, click full screen. This is an HD video. You can see it. It says tracking events, window activated, window created. And if I click here, you can see the button's been clicked on. If I click up here, you can see I hit a letter A, I hit a letter G, that's all that stuff's being clicked on. Come in here, click with the mouse button, I'm getting the position inside of my panel, as well as my position on my screen. Mouse button one was clicked, and the number of clicks. Here I double clicked with my right mouse button, you can see all that information's been tracked. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can do in regards to tracking events on GUI interfaces in Java. Leave any questions or comments below or topics you want me to cover in the future. Till next time.